Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the first part of our series on deconstruction or apostasy. Uh, today we're going to be looking at what scripture teaches us about the pattern of apostasy. In C.S. Lewis's masterful work, The Screwtape Letters, he imagines a correspondence between a senior ranking demon and then that demon's nephew, who's a young tempter. Uh, in these very creative letters, C.S. Lewis captures the nature of spiritual warfare in a powerful way that really grips the imagination, and it does penetrate to the heart even. One of the great insights provided via the demonic advice of old Uncle Screwtape uh, to his young nephew, Wormwood, is the manner in which the devil frequently brings people to their own destruction. He says, Indeed, the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, and without signposts. Frequently, it is through neglect that even Christians wander into sin. Now, those who are perishing in the world, as scripture says, are oftentimes being brought to their final destruction on an easy-made path. Satan doesn't want our utter destruction to be difficult, though he is the, the great accuser of our souls and he delights in human suffering, which is a terrifying thought as it is. He's just as happy to make do with human comfort so long as those comforts keep that person away from the knowledge of God. So be it a believer in Christ or a non-believer, the enemy has many methods of interfering with our chief purpose in life, which is to know God and to enjoy him forever. Now, as we consider how people apostatize, or apostatize. Um, it's helpful to remember what apostasy is. And apostasy is the status of those who have professed faith in God and then eventually show that they never actually possessed faith in God. So drawing from the following text in Hebrews, we're going to discover a recognizable pattern. And I pray that as we are reading this and studying this together, it might awaken someone to the realization that they are on that slow, gentle, downward road to destruction. The text is Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage each other daily while it is still called today, so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. For we have become participants in Christ if we hold firmly until the end the confidence that we had at the start. Note that the first step to recognizing unbelief in our heart is to watch out or to take care or to beware of oneself. Uh, this word literally means to see, to perceive, to behold, to pay attention, to use discernment. Use your powers of understanding and observation to consider yourself. Uh, the author of Hebrews uses uh, several such warning statements uh, in issuing these to his readers, and therefore the Holy Spirit who has inspired this book is also issuing warnings to us. Similar to this passage that we just read in chapter 3, verse 12, in chapter 2, verse 1, we're exhorted not to neglect the message of salvation, that we have heard from the Lord Jesus Christ himself, so that we don't drift away. We must be attentive. If we are not attentive, it may lead to an evil, unbelieving heart that causes one to fall away from the living God. And the danger of neglecting our salvation is very serious, obviously. Loving God and following God are intrinsically linked together. We don't neglect that which we desire most strongly. So if we don't want to fall away from fellowship with God, we can check on our heart, how our love relationship is with God. Um, 
Elie Wiesel, the Romanian-American Jewish author of the famous book Night, is credited with saying, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. Now, some people believe that those who apostatize are, are going through doctrinal drift or whatever. Um, it's because they don't have the right theology or whatever. Um, that's why people fall away. That's why people apostatize. They don't have the right beliefs. They don't have the right doctrine. That's only partially true. Um, it's really born out of a heart that doesn't love God, that doesn't take care to know him rightly. Doctrinal drift begins with devotional drift. And so it's not hard to see how indifference leads to this evil heart condition. Evil here in this sense is the Greek word poneros, which just means that which is malicious, degenerate, ruinous in effect. It's immoral. Jesus himself, in somewhat shocking terms, actually called his disciples evil of this kind. When he was teaching them how to pray, he said that even though y'all are evil, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. So how much better of a gift giver is God? This sort of evil condition is what he, the, the word of God is telling us. This resides in all human beings who are created in the likeness of Adam. If you'd like some more clarity on that, you can read Psalm 5, 9, Ecclesiastes 8, 11, Jeremiah 17, 9, Romans 3, 9 through 12, and Romans 3, 23. We have inherited this evil heart condition, and it's what many theologians call indwelling sin. This congenital sin heart condition is perpetuated by unbelief. Um, unbelief, as it's mentioned in our passage here in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, is literally faithlessness or unfaithfulness. It's the antonym of faith. It's the, it's the default setting for people, um, the unregenerate world. This is why scripture says you must be born again. Your heart cannot heal itself because it's dead. Um, you, you can only be regenerated by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit and his impartation of faith. In many ways, Hebrews is a book of faith. Um, it exhorts believers, primarily Jewish believers, is who the initial audience was, to persevere in faith and continue in the steadfast confidence that they have in the new and better covenant in Jesus Christ. And so if we don't continue in faith, there's this evil, unbelieving heart that's exposed. Again, it was there all, all along, but it is exposed, and it finally becomes hardened by what the author of Hebrews here calls the deceitfulness of sin. Now, unbelief is itself a sin. It's also the root of all sin. It's like a spring, but it's a spring of depravity that pours forth all kinds of transgressions. Charles Spurgeon once said that, the sin of unbelief will appear to be extremely hideous when we remember that it is the parent of every other iniquity. There is no crime which unbelief will not beget. The more that one lives in unbelief, the more natural sin becomes. Uh, the more natural sin becomes, the more the heart becomes closed off to anything that is good and holy and righteous. And then it becomes plain to everybody that this heart has joined the ranks of the fallen angels and the unregenerate world because they reject God. This is the pattern of apostasy that we see from this text. Inattention increases. Evil is manifest in the heart through unbelief. And then that unbelief finally causes perpetual sin to blind the mind and calcify the heart. Now, it's also important at the end of that passage to recognize that the scripture says we have become participants in Christ. Let's just read it again here really quick. Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage each other daily while it is still called today, so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. For we have become participants in Christ if we hold firmly until the end the confidence that we had at the start. It says we have become participants in Christ, not we will become participants in Christ if we endure till the end. Persevering in faith until the end proves what we have been all along. And so it's those who believe 
and those who endure, who enter into the promised rest, which stands in stark contrast to the, the pattern of those who fall away. And this is a, a disquieting reality. It should be somewhat upsetting, frankly, but it is one that God has ordained and that he has uh, planned from before time began. As we'll see in the next session, Jesus himself said that this is going to happen. Uh, as for today, as we wrap up here, I would encourage you with the very words of scripture to listen to the Lord's voice and hear that today is the day of salvation. Do not harden your heart. Believe in God. Trust in him. Look to Christ, the Savior. Throw yourself upon him for your salvation. And we'll come back again next time to talk about the necessity of apostasy.